moved over. And made a little bit smaller too. Doesn't quite fit in the box like the single digit do. Yeah, and we're every every few seconds we're gaining more traction back on the uh, oh yeah on the YouTube side. How do you how do you how can you tell whether or not it's live on YouTube versus? Uh, oh, it is. It says streaming. Oh, okay. Down there. All right, everybody. We got uh, Jorge uh, uh, hitting some practice balls. Uh, um, before we get this uh, match underway, make some uh, corrections here on the screen. Um, this is the finals. It is a modified uh, modified final finals. Uh, so it is a single race to 13. It is not a true double elimination uh, event. Um, it is winner breaks, 10 ball, must call ball. The uh, early 10s are allowed and three, fall, three, three foul is in effect. Um, and so far we have seen some amazing performances uh, here tonight. Um, and it's coming down to a conclusion here. Um, so far, Jorge has been undefeated. And uh, unfortunately, um, uh, the person that put Savannah on the backside is Jorge. So they met in the hot seat match, and now they're concluding in the finals. So uh, this was a, uh, some would say this is a meant-to-be uh, scenario. Um, uh, looks like, oh, it looks like Savannah pulled away with the, uh, the lag there. And she's getting right to it. She's not wasting any time. Beep, beep. All right, everybody, thank you again for supporting the stream all weekend, for being here. I think this is going to be an amazing match. They had a great hot seat match. Um, do me a favor and, and click the share button on both YouTube and Facebook. Share it out there for everybody. Appreciate you guys clicking the, the, the like button, the thumbs up on the final stream, the one we just restarted on YouTube. This is going to be an exciting match. Buckle up. Oh, here comes the two ball. And the four ball goes down. Okay, so the two ball came up short. Yeah, no play on the one, but obviously there's probably gonna be a push out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where I like pushing out to on this one. You know, she uh, she wants to leave she wants to leave distance, and uh, she does not want to leave an easy opportunity to play a safe. Uh, so. Yeah, so she left him really flat on that one. So he's got to execute it really well, getting that cue ball back down here or getting the one ball back down here since he's got cover on both sides. And uh, Savannah, from what we've seen, likes to hide the cue ball. Uh, Jorge, on the other hand, uh, seems to like to hide the object ball. So. Yes, I'd agree. John Pulaski, yes, uh, she's using a key, one of the new uh, Keelwood shafts on her new... Lucasi Q. She's a, a Lucasi player. Yeah, it's a keel wood shaft with a carbon fiber core. Yes. Is a keel wood have a carbon fiber? Or I thought it was the maple shaft had the carbon fiber core. Well, so she has a new oh. line. The, yeah, so her shaft is not out in production yet right mm. now. So she is actually shooting with a prototype keel wood shaft with a carbon fiber core. Well, if Lucasi is listening and watching, uh, she is doing a great job testing it out for you. You guys might, you guys probably did something right here because uh, she is not missing. And uh, I can't imagine that she's been playing with this chef for very long. And uh, her position play and pocketing balls, her safety play um, has been... Well, it shows she's in the finals. Yes, right. Absolutely. So that speaks for itself, you know. Uh, Zeb, no, these are just standard diamond four and a half inch pockets. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Crawford, the 
Peruvian devil up oh, in yeah. North Dakota. How's it going, Zeb? Haven't seen you in Arizona for a while. <laughs> His sister's probably kicked him out. Probably. So he's going to try and lightly kiss it. Oh, okay, so she opted to push it to the rail. She didn't want any risk of him being able to make it. No, definitely not. Other than the, the slice down the rail, which is not an easy shot. And again, Justin, I do want to thank you for staying here most of the day, helping commentate and do everything, keep anybody entertained on the stream. <laughs> Appreciate it when, when players who play in the event love the game so much that they want to give back and help out that way. Absolutely. Uh, you're very welcome. I, everything that you guys do, I've, I've always thoroughly enjoyed, you know, even though I'm a very consistent loser <laughs> and being put out fairly early. I wouldn't go um, that far. But uh, I tell you what, I, what you guys are doing is nothing but amazing. And uh, the opportunity to make some money that you guys are providing for people is kind of, you know, I think it's set a new tone in the billiard industry in America because... You guys started with the Mako and what? No, we started with the first one was the Moby Dick, actually. Uh, it was Jason Osborne's idea. He wanted to do a thousand dollar entry bar table five eighteen under ten ball tournament. That's right. And he had he came up to me and he said, I have the perfect name for the tournament. It's a great white whale of tournaments. It's the Moby Dick. And that is our that is the namesake and the start of uh, mob productions. It would have been uh, Jack and Jason running a couple tournaments, but Rebecca came up with Mob Productions, Mob stands for Murray Osborne Billiards. And the, the Rebecca is silent in there, but it, she's behind everything. <laughs> she's the mastermind. Absolutely she is. <laughs> she's a ninja, a mastermind. Uh, Will, she, uh, uh, she, Savannah went for, I believe, 710 or 750 in the Calcutta. I think she was the fourth highest. Yeah, I don't remember who was in the... Who's in the top ten? I think he's yeah, he's just trying to he's just trying to roll it up, leave himself for the six in the side. I think he's Yes, that is why she has the license plate that says mob on. <laughs> An opportunity to let out the stroke. Okay. It looks like he's just going to follow this ball with uh, probably just straight top, come up, leave himself an angle on the eight. I'm not sure where he's wanting to go with the nine, but uh, from what we've seen from Jorge, um, he's most likely just going to kind of punch out to shoot the nine in the corner um, from the eight. But, uh, oh, that's right, he's a lefty. That makes sense. He grabbed the extension here. Nice makes a big difference comes up yeah I think he's just gonna pull it back and kind of punch it actually going three rails is probably not a bad idea on this shot either he can shoot the nine in the side if he overruns it shoot the nine in the corner if he really overruns it he can shoot the nine in the the bottom right corner same with punching it but okay so he's shooting the nine and the, the side, side. He just kind of floats it yeah out of all six options i listed it was yeah. none yeah he took the seventh <laughs> yeah, i took the seventh you know I, I think that's one of the reasons why i enjoy listening oh, oh no my, no he hits the corner and makes it and it was dead perfect oh my so it starts the opposite okay. way that the hot seat match started because he won the first couple games there playing flawless. Makes that mistake of catching the corner. And uh, Savannah starts with a lead. Did anybody take Clay Belfour up on his uh, bet? He said he was taking the winner of the semifinal match in this finals. That's why replying to Will Smith 7-10. Oh, no, it was 7-10 to the Calcutta. Oh, okay. Yep. We got the Derek the Scorcher Lorcher in on the chat. I appreciate that, Derek. 
Oh, that was a good break. Six that was on the yeah. side. Yep, the, oh. six, the six was that second ball, wasn't it? It has a shot on the one ball. And the one ball got a good bump, too, so she's a little bit a little bit cleaner on the one now. A little better so than it could have been. Yeah. I think, you know, she might just play it to this right side of the table and get after the 210 there. Um, I, don't, I don't see any reason to come to the other side of the table. I'm going to step away for a second, guys. I'm leaving with Justin. Yeah, Jack's got to take a couple of things here. Okay. Oh, no. Wow. That was a very unfortunate rub off of the nine to scratch on the side there. But I I understand. I can understand why she put some pace on it. She knew that she was going into the nine. I, I, I just think she just may not have anticipated actually uh, going off of the top side. She just didn't want to soft roll it and probably bump the nine and then be hooked by it. So she put a little extra pace on there. And uh, she probably stroked through the one ball a little bit cleaner than she wanted to. So Jorge's got a 210 combo here. Um, it's probably just going to go for the make. Um, there's not really an option to play safe here. I think he still got away with it. Um, nope, she can see the full two ball. So, um, now Savannah being a righty, um, she's going to be not only stretched out um, with the bridge, she's going to be treetop. So, she might even need two bridges. Or, no, she can get in there. The three ball's in the side, so even if she does come up uh, too long, she can shoot the three in the side or into the corner. Um, there's no option for her um, coming up short on this. Yeah, just like that. Good pace, come around two rails. She's got the three in the side. She does have to run into the nine, but I think if she just kind of rolls it in with top, kind of comes off of the nine. She'll be on the bottom side of the four. Um, yep, there you go. The nine ball pushed the cue ball up a little bit, so she's on the bottom side. So she can go one rail below the ten ball towards the side or go towards the side and come back over to the right side of the table. I'm not sure what she's feeling right now, but... Okay, so she like she opted just for coming back to the center of the table. She might have came up just a hair short, but knowing her, she's going to cross this ball. She's calling it cross corner in the upper right. Um, yeah, I think she's going to go three rails behind the seven ball. She's going to play it with top inside, I think. And, uh, yeah, top inside. Nicely done. And I'm... I think she got him. Yeah. I apologize, guys. I just realized I had about 50 of you guys on the uh, wait to be approved for the mob productions uh, private group. I was taking care of some business earlier. I just approved everybody so you can go in and see the payout. All right, guys. Yeah, if you guys can smash that like button, click the share, um, get the word out so that way everybody can see this wonderful performance here that we're about to witness in the 2024 Bandit first year, actually. So, yep. The inaugural event of the Bandit, 2024, $1,000 entry, 10 ball, big table, which is actually the first event as well. That's a $1,000 entry for uh, 10 ball, big table, for 650 and under. There's only, and yeah. And I think the, the only event that's out here that's on the big table is the 580 and under lunch out, or was? So what was the lunch out? Show is now a Phoenix tournament. They're going to have a, a, they're going to have an 
Oh, that's right. In a different format, different concept completely. I believe Tim Daniels is running that, which is a great tradition, and rightly so, because, you know, Sam was such a, 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 a just a lively part of the Phoenix Cool scene, and it's tragic in the past level to it. Mm -hmm. You you could say that uh, Sam Lynchow was this generation's uh, Savannah Easton. Yeah, skill wise, absolutely. Yeah. He, was, he was he was kind of on a similar ascent. Yep, he was kind of an exploding uh, pool player uh, in the low 500s and uh, just exploding. Um, and uh, like Savannah, he had a lot of uh, strong players in his corner uh, coaching him and showing him. Um, Thanks, Trish. Sorry about that. My mic was off. That's the second time we've done that, I think. Oh, it happens too often. <laughs> hey, thanks for playing. Our mics are still quiet there. Let me, uh, I'm going to try and turn mine a little bit more direct here. Will right. you guys let me know if this sounds a little bit better? Jorge, Jorge has tied it up at one apiece. We're in for a great match here. I think he did bet on Easton. Are you talking about Dominic Dunn? Because if Dominic Dunn bet on Savannah, uh, we need Larry and Tiffany to have a conversation with Dominic because that is the that is the hex of hex. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Thanks. Trish. Thanks, Sieglin. And John. Appreciate you guys. All right. It looks like Jorge is he's less elevated this time. And he follows through it with draws a draw. It, draws it to the corner. Scratches in the corner. You know, he scratched and uh, a couple of times in his last two, three matches. One, I think one was with uh, him and Savannah. He scratched maybe two scratches against their match. And then the he match had a couple pop that. off the table, I believe. Was, okay, yeah, I think, I think you're right. So it kind of explains why his first break in this match is a nice soft follow yeah, controlled, through. Yeah, controlled. You know. Almost too controlled. Mm -hmm. But Savannah's coming to the pretty, pretty open table here. Uh, what I'm looking at is I think the six goes by the eight. Oh, yeah. Six and goes by, seven goes in the side. The, the real shot is going to be getting from the six to the seven. Does seven goes in the side, do you think? Yeah. Oh, no, it does. It does, definitely. Yeah, from this angle. Well, Although I wouldn't be surprised if tighter. she... It's tighter than it looks from here. She may actually just play the six ball uh, into the corner and go one rail up to shoot the seven in the corner, but I don't like... She's got more than enough room for that seven to go in the corner there past the eight. Right. So, but I mean, even uh, if she, her cue ball was where it is now, she can cut it in and go twice cross or go across for it. Yep, exactly. Is she going to draw it straight back, leave it in the center of the table? Okay, so she opted to go to the rail come back uh, out under hit that one a little bit but she's got a natural two rail so she could either spin it in with left and go two rails back towards the seven or hit it with a little bit of inside and stay dead on that center line i think uh using the bridge she's probably gonna feather it yep this is justin turner steven i hope you brought your whistle buddy oh undercut that but caught the eight ball for as a blocker I think we're going to see a soft kick. Yeah, that's on. what I like here, playing a soft kick to put the cue ball on the eight. Yeah. Yeah, you want to go into the six kind of full on the left side, so that way the cue ball carries back over to the eight, and the six ball goes into the rail above the eight. The salad eating machine. Uh, hopefully you guys didn't hear me actually eating the salad. <laughs> it was delicious, though. And I think Rebecca had a hand in that, too. Yes, she did. Oh, he gave him the opposite way. I thought he was going to go off the side rail. I thought he was going to go all that way, but I think he spun, I think he spun into it, it full. Yeah, I think you're just supposed to hit that with just center, center ball with top. Um, looks like she's got an opportunity to go straight in the corner and follow it up. And kind of... Oh, she missed it, though. Hey, Ben, thanks for playing in the tournament. appreciate you coming out and playing. 
First place in the tournament by itself is 11300 Both these players are in the $100 side pot, so they are playing for a difference in that of $500. It's 1500 for first, 1000 for second. Savannah has first locked up in the 300 and the uh, 200 winner take all, which is a total of 9700 So she gets that on top of, top of whether she gets first or second place. So if you start to see her free will and it's because she's already got 10 grand in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 17 grand because that's the second place is 7,500. Oh, yeah. Well, I stand corrected. You know, is this the the first time you've seen Jorge in the finals of the so, event? So first in the finals. He played in a Mako uh, and didn't have the rhythm he has today th that I've seen today in this tournament. He won a match and then lost two matches. Okay. Um, I don't want to say I didn't remember him playing. I don't know if he was on the stream table because in that tournament, Rebecca was running it and I was in the booth watching the streams and commentating. But uh, he, he's played he's played very, very well. It's did Savannah play in the Mako? I think so, yeah. I don't, I don't know how she did. I'd have to look that up. You know, I, I lose so quickly that I don't get to see the rest of the players, so. <laughs> well, the first time we had to make it, you lost so quickly, you ended up taking fourth. I know. I, I'm trying to repeat that, I guess. All okay, right. so nicely done. He just kind of rolls it in. Yes, it will, Dolores. Yes, it will. All right. He's up two to one. I just noticed a couple of things, and I've watched a little bit of Jorge play. He has a kind of a, I'm going to call it a cocking mechanism, where he triggers himself into, into shooting. If you watch his back foot, he picks it up and taps it. Interesting. Next time you, uh, next time you have a shot, watch it. It's hard to see on the, on the screen, but I've seen him do it a couple of times now. Uh, every time I've looked for it, I've seen him do it. Interesting. Yeah, Savannah kind of rolls her fingers a little bit mm -hmm. on her back. Everybody backhand. has some sort yeah. of a, a trigger mechanism that, that makes you get into the shot. Okay, so it looks okay, so he's going back to center table. All right. And he he's not as elevated, so he's pretty parallel to the table here. So And he and popped he that one a little more so he didn't draw it, but it got kicked. Mm -hmm. into the same corner. That was brutal. That was a great break, too. I think he made one, too, didn't he? Yeah, yeah I think he made the... I heard, oh, no, maybe he didn't make a ball. Oh, yeah, no, he broke No, try. he didn't. He did break try. Okay. Yeah, I think... Uh, he put Jorge a lot of body into that one, though. Yes. Jorge went for 220 in the Calcutta. That's pretty inexpensive. And this one it was, it was like just shy of... Just shy of 12,000 total in the Calcutta. I think we're going to see this one grow. This this event here. Oh, it's, it's going to it's going to fill up. It filled up pretty quick, but it's going to fill up within a day or two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like alumni should have a uh, first chance. <laughs> first paid. <laughs> yeah, first first paid. reserved. Yeah. Okay, it looks like she's calling it all the way up. And she's going to try and carry that cue ball all the way to the right side of the four Oh, okay, ball. to play the four in the same pocket? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, Jules, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Yeah, use the 4-9 uh, as cover. Maybe a little inside. Yep. A little overcut there. Big bounce. Well, but playing but that, you also cover. play a hook because you're, you, you play the cover. Mm -hmm. Savannah went for 7-10 in the Calcutta. Yeah, I'm saying, right, Jules? Alumni, right? You know, the, the inaugural event, we're all considered to be alumni. Or maybe just the losers alumni, you know. <laughs> That's a good question, Zeb. Are you guys planning on changing the Fargo for this event? Like the I, I don't believe so. I, uh, that's actually the boss's decision, and I think this is. I think she said this was going to stay a 650 and under. I'm not 100% sure. Hmm. 
Like we have the, the gunslinger that's always six ninety nine. Yeah, and the uh, the Desperado, right? That's another one that stays the same. That's the 720 and under? Uh, 730 and under. 730, 730 and, under. and under, yes. Okay. Uh, Rhonda, uh, we really don't do the, uh, if you're talking the high entries, we don't have a ladies event, but we do have the puddle jumper, which is coming up in two weeks. It's uh, the 20th and 21st at Rum Runner and Putters. That is a 451 and under $300 entry. Um, and you have to have at least 350 games. That was a nice, nice strike. He he ended up leaving her a, a very, uh, a very executable shot on the three. But I'm not sure if she's going to kind of punch it and go one rail back up for the four, or um, just roll it up towards the. Yep, she's going to just roll it up towards the rail. There was enough room for her to hold it there, so. Um. Chase, then it wouldn't be the Moby Dick. Uh, if we leave it at 650 and under, we are going to have to have some additional criteria met. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Rebecca. There was a pretty, pretty s standard uh, criteria that needed to be meet, met in order to get into this event. Um, well, she's not going to leak the information what the criteria will be quite yet. We'll talk about it. It's This was her invention. This was her tournament. She's the one that, that, that wanted to have it done, and it was a smashing success. By the way, babe, how are the pups doing? We have two three-and-a-half-month-old uh, uh, Border Collie puppies at home. Oh, nicely done. A little overroll, though. Gets I thought that, it was going to slow down there. Gets to that tweener zone. I think she's going to... I I wouldn't be surprised if she uh, rip draws this, you know. She might run into the 10 if she goes into the side. But Oh, I was oh, afraid we wow. were going to catch a corner. She got close to that corner. Man. That was a gutsy shot. That's fearless. Yeah. She doesn't, she doesn't know that those shots can be you trouble. You see this face? I wish somebody could take a picture of this face right now. It's you, fierce. I don't think you guys can see it on the stream here, but from where we're sitting, she has got the most determined look on her face right now. Um, it's a look that could scare children. That's, <laughs> that's that fierce right now. <laughs> Jorge is uh, reshaping his tip as we speak. Um, don't call me that on the air. <laughs> Sorry, babe. Hey. <laughs> uh, we got... Uh -oh. I, I think we're going to see a push out here. I don't... I don't know that he can see the edge on that ball. No, I don't think so. Um, Okay. I'm not sure. I think I would actually just push out to the bottom rail towards the two ball. That way you're shooting away from the two and your safety. Oh, wow. He's he's jumping this. He's not even wow. going to roll out. He's, he's going for the he's gusto. He's got the push out option and he's jumping. That's interesting. Must not be a place he likes to push. Uh, yeah. Or Oh, wow. I'm not happy with the way this conversation is going, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read it. I didn't read it. All right, so she's going two, two rails behind the one, or is she actually going two rails into the one? She's going two rails into yeah. the one and trying to nudge it. Oh, she wanted to hit it going into it. Yeah. yeah. She was trying to tie it back up. Yeah, I'm, I, I agree with that, uh, Sylvette. I'm not a fan of them leaving the rack on the table. It had, does have an effect to uh, affect the ball roll. <laughs> All right, so we got Jorge on the one. Um, it, 
Yeah, I keep forgetting he's left-handed, which explains kind of why he's uh, opting to shoot over the eight ball like that instead of placing it off to the side. Um, that could just be nerves a little bit too. Um, he didn't want to uh, put the cue ball on the right side of the one and kind of come across to the left side of the two probably. He's a, he'd rather be uh, a little bit uncomfortable but straight in shooting that ball. Oh, wow. Oh. You know, I don't know if I need to shut up right now or... No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't tell if we're seeing Jorge... Uh, um, well, there's a lot of pressure in this match. I mean, it's I mean, even for both of them, even yeah. though she has a good, a good payday set up, she wants to win. Yeah, he's shaking his head no right now. So he's he's uh, he's rewinding the clock and the replay in his mind right now. All right, so Savannah's got uh, okay. So she got a little flat on it. Draw back 10 inches. Perfect. There we go. Beautiful. Perfect. See, and I would probably so end is she, up. Is she going to go twice cross drawing it to come back below the six ball? That's what she was just looking to shoot yep. the six ball up top, right? I think, I, oh, she's going low. So low right and two rails out. Yep. Or, well, one rail technically, I guess, but uh, shooting it up in the corner. I was kind of expecting her to go top on that. Yeah? Yeah. I like the way she shot it. I just, uh, it's it's a confident stroke. Absolutely. The only, oh, look at that. Oh, slow down there, cue ball. Oh, she's got more than enough. I think she's going to shoot it the same way on the seven ball. She's going to pull it back to that that long rail to the side so that way she's got the uh, the eight yep she wants to be on the top side of the eight you know she doesn't want to go all the way around the table again but uh, oh she, she is very disciplined right now she oh, she wants it to stop okay beautiful she can draw this back to play it in the bottom right or she can roll forward to play it in the bottom left mm-hmm Yep, so she liked rolling it forward. So it's a little stop shot or stun. Kind of slide the cue ball down a couple inches or just stop it right there. Yep, so she opted to slide it down an inch or two. Not even taking a chance. Just getting right down and firing it in. Nice, she takes a 3-2 lead. Uh, James, I don't believe she does m much of matching up in gambling. She is a tournament player. Uh, she wants. She's looking for a, a future in tournament pool. Uh, she's also a very good student in homeschooling, so she's got a future ahead of her no matter what she does. But uh, it's not she's not really the action gambling kind of player, which rightly so at 14, that's not something that should be that needs to be there. Yeah, no. She has uh, two great parents giving her great support. And we're only seeing her isolate one discipline right which is rotation or well eight ball right american so, pool so, so she plays she plays eight ball nine ball ten ball but she did just play in the banks, uh, the right? bank the u.s open banks and one, one pocket, pocket. Yeah. and she was i think she got a game or two in banks off of uh tony choan but it wasn't did. it wasn't a skunk he won the match but i think she got a couple games didn't she yeah for four two was that right frisbee didn't savannah get a couple games against tony I thought I saw it as 4-2. Yeah. And, and Tony can bank. Well, and I think she got it. She, she won She won a couple of games in the one pocket, too. Okay. She didn't. Uh, and and um, there's no empty chairs in that, really. And there's a lot of great players. She just... Yeah, some, w some would say it's one of the toughest fields out there. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, especially here in Vegas. Uh, um. That was a nice shot there, right into the window for the two ball. Um, I'm not sure what he likes more for 
the three, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually just punches the cue ball down to the bottom rail to shoot the three in either of the corner. Right. Um, because the four ball's right there, and you don't want to bump it, you know. So if he can get on the right side of the three underneath it. Oh, wow, so he was able to thread it right through those balls. That was a f Robert, you're asking shot. about the, the Desperado tournament. We ran that the third week in December this last year, but it's actually not going to happen in 2024 because we're moving it to the weekend before the BCA World Championships in February next year. So there's going to be the 730 and under uh, Desperado $1,500 entry 9-foot 10-ball tournament. Uh, and then the, on Saturday and Sunday, and then Monday starts the Swanee, which is a 64-player added money tournament here that gets a lot of top pros. And then the very next day starts the CSI Expo and the BCA World Championships. So it's going to be pool after pool after pool. Uh, yeah, in 45 days. Yes, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I wanted to make everybody aware of that. It's like 45, 50 days of pool straight here in Vegas <laughs> from February 1st and really th and really through March because when we goes through for, for people in Vegas we have the West in March we starts with the Western Women's and the Doc Hill and then we have the Andy Mercer the open pro event yep that's right so it goes it's quite a while and John Mora was the repeat winner of the Andy Mercer this year hats off to him it looks like uh, Jorge's got the uh, five in the side here. Michael Lippman, uh, absolutely. Uh, not only did Michael play, Michael Deitchman play very well, he also conducted himself as expected. He's always been a class gentleman. He had an amazing tournament, and uh, he uh, was very thankful for you with you assisting him in playing. So he, he, he definitely made a mention of that to me. So thank you for supporting pool, Michael. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a strong showing there against uh, uh, James Davey. I think I just take my medicine and play the play the stop oh, shot the here. Stop shot here is perfect just so you get your angle on it and you take the shape you can get on the nine. He's executing at a, at a high level, though, right now, so we might see him pull this cue ball all the way back to the bottom rail or, well, what you guys are seeing would be the top rail. I used to really like force following this ball, actually, and coming all the way to this bottom rail and back up table. Uh, He's having an awkward time bridging, though. Yeah, as a lefty. Yeah, he's, he's queuing up some draw here. I'm not sure what his stroke. Yep, so he just kind of stunned it out. I like that play. I didn't think that he had the angle for that. Well, do you roll this ball, or do you shoot this with some bottom outside to use the two rails to control speed? Um, uh, actually, I, I think I shoot this with draw, just straight draw. Straight draw? Yeah. That way uh, I kill the cue ball and I can go the second rail. He's going center cue ball with a little bit of right, a little bit of right on that. Oh, he hit that beautifully. Oh, wow. He doesn't want to be on the rail, though. This yep. shot just got a lot more complicated. Straight top. No left, no right, straight top, and you push through the nine. You don't want to punch this to where it checks because that nine ball will slide on you. You want to you want to smooth this ball in. You're only you're hitting the very very top edge of the cue ball. So if you punch it, it's gonna the the cue ball is gonna leave the table a little bit. And it's gonna kind of hop so to speak. So you want to be really careful following through with this shot. Just what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. He got he got a little worried there. Got a little scared, thinking that he needed to to force follow it. But the softer you hit that with a longer stroke, you're gonna get so much more out of that cue ball. And, uh, Savannah's got ball in hand now, and it looks like she's looking at her natural line to fall on the ten in the bottom right corner. So she's played this shot across before. Okay, good. I like yep. that. I saw her shoot that same shot earlier in the tournament, and she chose to go across the line to play in the other corner. Oh, really? And she overrolled her line. 
So I like that because when you're rolling into your line, you have such a larger margin to, of, of a landing space. Yeah, absolutely. Nicely nice done. Well played. She's yeah, up some, four to two. Some would argue that she came up short on that 10, but I think because of how short she is, I she think it's perfect. put it perfect. Absolutely. You, you, need know. To know, you need to know how you play and where you are on it because if she goes another foot further, she's stretching and uncomfortable. Yeah. I saw her shoot that same shot like three times against Tara and I always thought in my mind but I'm six foot one right right you yep. know and here she is at five foot so five and five something yeah you know <laughs> you, need to know you need to know what your limitations yeah. are and, and 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 assets actually so the fact that she knows that she can leave the cue ball there and be perfect as far as her stance goes you know I think uh I think she's thinking a little, a little ahead, you know, like, and she's remembering those, you know, those, uh, those certain shots and Thank stuff you. like that. Oh yeah. I'll, I, I might, I might not be here for the next Mako though. Me neither. <laughs> he, he might be in the, in the, uh, what, what is it? The, the, the labor room. Yeah. I'll, I'll be in. His his wife's not gonna be due around that time, so yeah, he's got a kid coming. Yeah, I'll be in the delivery room He'll most likely. I'm allowed to come to it though. That's the weird. That's the scary part. I'm allowed to play in it, but uh, I might have to take a helicopter ride Tom back to Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys. I think he's got uh, the cut right. He's gonna play it in the corner. Do you play in the top left or the top right? I I like the left. I do too. I like that play. He hit that with some speed. He might have been a little worried about that one. If he cut it thinner to make it, he would have scratched. Well, maybe actually, you know what? The line would have been different. I think it would have been. I yeah. think. Yeah, I think it would have been. You know, anyways, it's hard but to hard to go back in time on that one. But what I'm saying is that was a little out of characteristic. Yes, I agree. Or out of character. I definitely agree. Um, you know, we, we we saw kind of a service or uh, nervous uh, shot there, and my my dyslexia is like really kind of stepping up right now. <laughs> well, we've been we, you, you, this is what your fourth straight match, fifth straight match, something of that nature. I don't even know. Yeah. I I think I walked in here at like two o'clock, so I've been in this chair for about eight hours, maybe seven seven and a half, somewhere in that range. So this may be my fourth possibly fifth match. Yeah, fourth or fifth, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, we were chatting there and I didn't see how he got back to the table. She uh unfortunately uh she uh she fired the one and it kissed the eight and oh. it kind of bobbled and came back out. Um it just clipped enough of the eight to keep the one from going in the corner. There was about a two third of a pocket there. I uh, appreciate all you guys coming back. We got about 600 people in the uh -oh. watching the stream. Appreciate you guys clicking the likes, the thumbs up, like button, click sharing the stream. Really appreciate you guys watching, tuning in, and appreciate those that have sent the sent in some donations for us. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Sitting here for three days. <laughs> I hope you had air conditioned seats because. My butt would be warm after three days. <laughs> that was a beautiful shot there. He he took no chances. He just kind of peered that ball into yep. the side, and he knew he was running into traffic. And I think he's gonna. We're gonna see him kind of just roll this three in because it looks like it. It's dead straight. It looks like he's got a very very slight angle, so he might punch it, or not punch it, but do a kind of like a firm stop shot here. Because the four ball's right there, right? There's no need to to do too much. But I don't know if you can see from from your angle, Jack. But he's like it looks fairly like, pretty straight, or is it just off? It, I I want to say it's just like he's aiming at the right side of the pocket. Okay. And he's kind of nervous. His backstroke's wiggling a little bit. Hit yeah, a good right at the right side of the pocket. We got a duck duck goose uh, situation here. Four, five in the same corner. Um, it looks like he can just roll up. Uh, 
some would call it a Tom Cruise out. Yeah, or a Tom Cruise out. He opted to go the two. Okay. Yep, just bring this ball back about the area it is now. Yeah, I'm wondering if he's going to come up come up on the bottom side of the seven to go two rails up for the eight or go long for the seven and kind of pull the cue ball back above the ten or below the ten. It looks like he's playing with outside. Yeah, nice stroke there. It's actually a really good drill is to shoot a shot and try to get back to where the cue ball was originally. To play it, you know, to play, play the shot, go off a rail or two, and get back to where the cue ball was. Okay. I don't think I've a, ever tried to do it's that. It's a great practice drill shot just for, just for speed and, and pace mm -hmm. uh, and cue ball control. Yeah, he's he's kind of he did a little little, a little hop there. Is a little straighter than he wants. Yeah, I'm not. Sh After watching him play, um, I can see him punching this and trying to go to the top rail, but I can also see him drawing straight back to go one rail. Okay. Yeah, He's queuing up low right now, so it looks like he's going to come straight back and try and go all the way back up table. Yep. Oh, wow, he almost made it on the second time. He did. Would have counted, and it's going to get straight in. <laughs> They're both on the rail. I agree with you, Blaine. We do not have a dress code for a reason. No, uh, um, so unfortunately, uh, my Fargo is over 600. Um, so I, I do not, uh, qualify to, uh, play in the, the thousand dollar entry. Um, I wish I could, but, uh, um, I don't think they'll make an exception. For yeah, you. they won't, <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much they 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 like me. <laughs> yeah, they they can love you, and uh, and yeah. it's not happening. Yeah. All right. Savannah takes a five-two lead. She's playing well, and uh, we've seen a few chinks in the armor on Jorge. I. What was that? Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. While she goes and breaks, I'm going to step away for a moment to get a beverage at the bar. Can I get you anything? Um, actually, you know what? If you wouldn't mind, uh, grab me some more lemonade. Yeah. Uh, or I think Christina might be coming back through here, but. Oh, is it? It's a 6.30 and under? Interesting. I will... The uh, Henry, where where's the uh, where's the six thirty in at? I don't even know who's holding that. I wasn't even aware that there was a six thirty and under um, tournament going on. I I'm unfortunately um, even though I'm in the. Uh, I'm in the billiard industry, um, but I am not. Uh, I'm not in the pool scene like what I used to be. Um, I would definitely love to play in it um, if there's a an ability or an opportunity to uh, single elimination bar box, uh, six hundred dollars. Yeah, if uh, if the family permits it and I'm able to get my kids taken care of, um, you know. These uh these bigger events um oh Jorge just slid right past the one 
All right, so I can't quite tell. I think the two ball plays off of the eight. If not, oh, she's going for the ten ball on the side, and she's going to put the cue ball right there behind the four. Yep, so she's going to bring the cue ball just a hair low of the one to pull it back. And it looks like the uh, the one ball is going to go down table here. Nice two-way shot. Very creative thinking. Look at that execution. Nicely done by Savannah. Leading up, going into 6-2 uh, into this match. Um, that was a great shot. I'm not really left-handed, but I'm trying here. <laughs> a little bit of teamwork here. Yeah, that was a very nice shot, well executed, and also smart. Had the 10 ball rattled, the cue ball was nice, tucked in behind that four ball. So um, she's not leaving any air. Um, she's trying to play as tight as she possibly can. And, uh, you know, I did see a comment in the chat about uh, Jorge being tired a little bit, but uh, I, I don't think that he's that you know, uh, both players are probably have a little bit of exhaustion and, uh, you know, um, fatigue is starting to set in. But uh, I think he's trying to find his gear here because uh, we're kind of seeing him kind of freewheel a li little bit, trying to get something going. You know, he's trying to start the choo-choo. Uh, if Dozer's 9-foot 10 ball is 650 and under... Yeah, I believe that's the tour stop for this, the the 650 and under. Uh, Henry was talking about uh, uh, a high dollar uh, tournament, I believe. I think it was 600 entry or um, something along those lines. You'll have to tag me in the uh, in the post there because I'd definitely be interested in seeing that. Uh, Marinda Le uh, Ledgerwood, thank you so much for the contribution. Really appreciate it. Can't quite tell if he can see the whole ball or not. Um, if he can see the top edge, I, I, it looks like he's going full. Um, okay, so he was able to see it full. Great speed. And it looks like uh, two rail. Okay, so she's going well. She's going up table to kick at this to make it from the bottom left, but I, th I think she's got enough room to go two rails. Um, I don't like going straight at this ball. And the reason why I like the two rails is uh, when you go two rails, the if you don't make the two ball in the corner, the two ball tends to hit the bottom rail or the side rail, then the bottom rail, and head back up table where your cue ball actually ends up dying and staying on the bottom rail. That was a nice touch save he played there. Yeah, he didn't move the cue ball very much there and no, was able to get absolutely. some good distance off of that. I think he played the two off of uh, the five ball. He did. Yeah, yeah. It just glanced off the edge of it. I think she does. She have the one railer here. It looks like I don't. I'm wondering if she's z-shotting this. Oh no, she's going one time. She's going into it full with some pace. Oh, good hit. And she got on the oh, and she's going to leave him tree topped. All right, so she did let him see the two ball, but uh, it is by no means an easy shot. Watch his foot when he's, oh, no, he's got a stretch on this one. It won't, won't work. Yeah, I'm going to pay attention to that while. Oh. Oh. He, I think the person who said in the chat that he needs to take a bathroom break is not wrong. It wouldn't hurt to just take a, a, a break and reset. Yeah, do the old splash of the water on the face. Absolutely. Reset. The Minnesota Fats versus Eddie Felson. Remember that part of the movie where Eddie's drinking and in the chair exhausted and Pats goes and freshens up and comes back and says, Best Eddie, let's play some pool. 
I do. That's it's one of my favorite things when I'm down in a match and I go to the bathroom and refresh. That's all I'm thinking about. See, I never, I never go to the bathroom. I like, I don't, I don't I remove myself from the table. My no. my reset is all mental. Mm, I need to get away sometimes. Uh, the. Uh, do you carry a bag with you? Hmm. I mean, if you don't go to the bathroom. I'm just kidding. No, I camel it out no, normally. Hey. Like, <laughs> I, if if you ever pay attention to me, I might go to the restroom once in a t- in a tournament for the day. I I try to go to the restroom before yes. before the tournament starts, and then um, I get hyper focused. I get uh, very very hyper focused. Okay, so, I absolutely um, can understand that. My biggest struggle is not eating when I play. That is like my number one thing. And so I, I will get very fatigued very quickly. So I have to force myself to eat food in between matches. That's something I talked to Edgar Jackson today about because he was really wearing down because he hadn't eaten. I said, when you're playing a tournament on the on the final day, which is what I call payday, because you got to yeah, work payday. for the payday, mm-hmm. it's a grind. And you're playing match after match after match. There isn't a lunch break nope. in there. You need to have a, a power bar with you or something you, or you can snack on to keep that energy level up. Correct. You are constantly processing information and constantly burning energy. Um, sooner or later, you're going to have to replenish it, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But when you're so focused on the... Uh, <laughs> when you're so focused on the prize, right, you, you tend to skip things, you know, and get carried away. Um, that, that's me. I, yep. I, I find myself in a position where I play two, three matches in a row, and then all of a sudden I got to play back to back to back again, and I have no time to eat because I didn't capitalize because I was so worried about thinking about my match and analyzing yep. it, you know, or trying to get that rest that I needed that I don't do any kind of uh, self care. Well, you've got some helpful hints in the chat there. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, she is definitely playing at her pace now. Oh, yeah. She is in dead rhythm. I feel like I saw somebody in the comments saying, what kind of chop is there going to be here? What kind of? Because she's running away with the wind. <laughs> oh, I doubt there's any. I, I know there's any chop because of the the difference in what she's already already got. She's she you knows she has a cushion to play with there. Yeah, the what shaft? If you're talking about Savannah, uh, Samantha, she's playing with a new a, a new prototype uh, Lucasi Keelwood shaft. It's you said it's Keelwood cored out with carbon fiber. That's what was explained to us and I you know I wish I remember who it was in the chat um, that was explaining it to us that her and Oscar are playing with the same shaft. But uh, we were told that uh, it's a Keelwood shaft by Lucasi um, that has a carbon fiber core inside. So um, if anybody is familiar with kiln wood, um, it's a kiln dried process that removes all moisture and sugars um, from the wood and uh, pretty much stabilizes the wood as well uh, and creates a stiffer hit. Well, it still has a little bit of deflection and it seems to me that, you know, the only reason for a carbon core shaft is to basically resemble a carbon fiber shaft to reduce what little deflection there would be in that shaft. And that's what she is playing with. Um, So it's probably going to have zero Mm -hmm. or um, very minimal deflection. deflection. So wherever she aims is where that cue ball is going. Uh, Matthew Moorhead, on that note, I do want to tip my hat to Oscar and Desiree. They've uh, uh, revamped what used to be the Mez West Tour, and it's now the Lucasi West Tour, West Coast Tour. Yeah. And they had the, at the first stomp at um, Hard Times t- this weekend, and I believe they had 146 players, which is awesome. I think that's one of the best tours out there. It gives everybody that chance to play top-quality opponents Same and really hone too, your game. Right? Yeah, same. So it's like six, seven, eight, nine for what the players are like A, B, C, and D. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, that was my 
That's my favorite. My favorite format. You get to play pros. You know, before uh, Chris Reinhold was Chris Reinhold. Um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I I lost to him. Yeah, he 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 torches me like nine four, and then I go to lose to uh, Lance. Uh, yep, Lance Stevens. Uh, Lance, Lance, Salazar. Uh, no, Salazar. Thank yeah, you. Uh, which is he's from Vegas. He, he's from Vegas. Yeah. He, he was here, for, lived here for a while. Now he's living back in California. I think he was from California and then in Vegas. Now back in California. Yeah, and I I got I ended up ninth through twelfth in that tournament, and I got hooked. It's a stepping stone. It yeah. really is. It does, it's amazing what it does for you. Nice safety play there by Savannah. Just want to respond to Brad Rule. You asked, does Mob Productions do anything 480-ish and under? Uh, small table. We actually have a 480 and under handicap tournament uh, that is um, going to be this year. It's a it's a ninety or no hundred dollar entry. Uh, we do a Calcutta on that. We'll be coming out with a bunch of flyers this next week. Go to mob mobbilliards.com mobbilliards.com and you'll see it later this week. I'll have everything up. Also follow us on Facebook. We also have the five hundred dollar entry 496 and under Gilligan coming up in August. You need 500 game robustness to uh, play in that, uh, but we have a, a good number. We do try to do high entry events for all skill levels. Oh, man! Everybody from Arizona must be gatekeeping all of these tournaments because I haven't heard of a single one of these. I appreciate you uh, sharing that information there, Henry. I will do my best to investigate further and see if I can lose some more. <laughs> it's lowly 500s. Have fun. Mm. Not sure. I'm ignoring that. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, Brad Rule, there are, all of our tournaments right now are in Vegas. Uh, we have, I did have the pleasure of running an event a couple years ago up at Hard Times, and we're hoping to be able to get back up and do another one. Uh, is she going three rails and ten in the side? Or Oh, okay. She was jumping. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't quite tell if the two was... Uh, pr- uh, uh, preventing her from uh, kind of getting after the cue ball, maybe. The reflection in the glass caught me off on that one. I couldn't see it well, and I'm, I'm looking at him seeing this table over there. Yeah. Oh, okay. You got a little bit of a glare there. Yeah, so with ball in hand, you got the two ball still on the left side of the rail. The three ball, the three ball goes in either corner, but uh, it's... Is he a little bit... Is he a little bit worried about the shape there? I think he's a little bit worried going from the two to the three, and that's why he's, I think he's thinking about playing safe on this one ball right now instead of going for it. Um, the three ball does go, um, but uh, the position to get to the two ball here um, is pretty tough. So, yeah, so it looks like, he, so he's gonna go for the safe here. Uh, he doesn't like coming in from the top, so he's going to try and snuggle the cue ball up on the back of the five ball here. There we go. Yeah, that's nestled right there. Did she just call that in the side? No, she called it in the corner. She's okay, going to one, one time. That's a reflection getting me again. Oh, she just missed it. Is she on two? Correct. She is on two. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jorge go after this 10 ball on the side, but uh, he still doesn't like getting to that three ball. So we may see him uh, follow up with the three foul here option. And... uh, <laughs> yes, she does, Zeb. I've seen it in her face. Now she walks around the table. Um, she really does kind of turn into this uh, ferocious player that you just want to step out of her way and just kind of 
let her do her thing. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to try and probably soft spin with uh, just all left. Let the cue ball carry over below the three. Um, so that way he can shoot it in the upper right-hand corner here. Um, and if he ends up not liking the shape he gets on the three, the benefit of this, he does have a safety. Well, I'm not sure what he did there. I think he was stuck halfway in between. Okay. I think he was he was looking at because he wanted to be below the three, you know, but uh, he didn't he didn't hit it that way, right? He hit it like he was trying to get on top of the three, you know, okay. which I I think he was just halfway torn. In what between. are you doing? What are you doing here? Of course, she is on two. I would cross this three and try and put the cue ball on the back of the seven and hold it with a little inside so that way the cue ball stretches back. So he went up table, warned her she's on two. Yep. This is a very, looks like a very, is it a hittable kick? Absolutely. She, yeah, she's called She's called the corner pocket. She's playing to go rail first and spin it a little bit. Yeah, and there's no Maybe risk Maybe not of even scratch. spinning. Yeah, she's just going to go She straight. might actually be looking at it that she might be able to call this in the left corner pocket. No, if, I don't know if she can get that far behind. No, never mind. I'm forgetting where the seven ball is. So she's yeah, called the bottom right. Well, it could. she could go into the three full. Maybe it goes off the five into the corner. Um. Ooh, Zeb, you were almost saying bad words there. Yeah. Yeah, you were, uh, you were trying to jinx it. Uh, yes, Mo, this is the finals. It's a race to 13. If he has enough, I, I actually like him pulling this this cue ball back behind. Uh, okay, so he crossed it. He's going to he, he's gonna show show her the three ball, though. Yeah. The yeah the, I think the three goes. I think she's got more than more than half a pocket here, so... But knowing her, she's probably going to go two rails across the. She's going to bank the three up table and go two rails and open up the four five and try and weld the cue ball to the back of the five or the four. Oh, okay, so she opened them up with the three ball and tried to hide the cue ball up table. Okay. I think Jorge. I think he can. I think you can play a stop shot here and send it two rails. It m yeah. He, he must not have liked how much he could see, so he kind of uh, he kind of just went after it with uh, pocket speed there. He didn't sell out a shot, but uh, he may. So she's calling the bank, and she's going to go one rail back underneath the four, probably to shoot it in the side or in the upper left-hand corner, but she's going to protect the cue ball. It looks like he's got a one rail option here. He might have to carry this to the left with some some uh, some spin. Definitely not an easy kick. Um, I'm kind of shocked to see uh, to not see him pull out his jump cue here. He's taking his jump cue out quite a bit, but I think the eight's impeding it, isn't it? He I, uh, makes a good hit there, though. And he's uh, going to get a result. I think she can see part of it. I don't know if she can see enough to bank it or make it or bank it out of there. No. Nah. Rail first. Yeah, she's going to go into the bottom rail. She's probably going to hit it soft, so that way it crosses below the 5-4, and the cue ball kind of goes up behind the 8 a little bit here. Yeah, nice and smooth. Okay, so she hit the bottom side to push the 3 up and bring the cue ball back. Either of those options are acceptable. I can't tell if uh, Jorge has the bottom of the 3 here, but... Uh, This might be a close one. I th did he get behind the 10 or did it leak out? No, it I leaked out for okay. sure. I, th I think he was trying to go for it. Oh, I didn't think he was. I thought he was, maybe he was trying to play the two or the two way, but I, I okay, he could have. I thought he was gonna just kind of roll it back behind the eight there, um, but. Uh,
Okay. I, I think she has to go up table and back down. I don't think she can hold it for the five with the six being where it's at. Uh, yeah, the six is a trouble ball there. If you're going up and down, though, you want to make sure you... Oh, she's... Oh, wow. She she's, tried. She tried to spin it. It is so easy to undercut that when you're hitting that ball soft. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost as though it grabs it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, throws it a little bit further offline. Yeah. It's tough to know when you're helping the ball throw in versus throwing the ball out of the pocket. Exactly. Oh, thank you, by the way, for the oh, grabbing me this. Absolutely. I and uh, and, and, and you me. don't have a tab, by the way. What? Yeah, we got you. You're, you're yeah. in here, you, no, you're, you're in here for eight hours yeah. putting up with my stuff. <laughs> you, you're, you're, we got you. Really appreciate Justin uh, coming out and supporting this. Players like Justin that make these events so much fun for us to run. Don't let them confuse you. They still yell at you sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They, they, these guys have been great for, man. How, well, I've actually, I've known, I've known you. So I've known we we've known each other when I was running tournaments back in Tucson, and I'd come up to some. Of, I think yeah. We both played in the eight and under at one time. There was an eight and under. After yeah. they lowered everybody in Arizona, there was an eight and under because we were both nines and lowered us to eights. Well, no, I was never a nine. Oh, you weren't. No. Oh, okay. So they remember I I was a five and I got bumped to a six to a seven to an eight in 2015, all in the same year. Rightly so. And then I think I was gonna get bumped to a nine. And then they uh, they went to Fargo, oh, okay. so I, I dodged right. a bullet there uh, because they got rid of the committee, and uh, um, that was when I was probably you know people say I play better now, but I think I you know I was well, one kind of, of the ruthless. First big then. tournaments I remember uh, was Tim Daniels ran I think it was a hundred dollar entry, um, either hundred dollar or two hundred dollar entry eight eight and under tournament at Main Street. Billiards. Yeah, the summer shootout. Yes, I remember that, and it was a great tournament, and uh, it, it was it was fun. Yeah, I lost to uh, Tony Tony Denton in the finals, and uh, I got second place. And I ran every rack out, and I missed the nine ball Ooh. to lose to Tony. Tony Denton, and he double dipped me because I was in the hot seat. Oof. And uh, Tony Tony could play a bit. He had the gear. It, yeah. If, it, uh, until he hit a certain limit at the bar. Yeah, I love you, Tony. He he was uh, he. Oh, is there a little bit of an echo there? All right. Oh, I got I to stand back a little bit with mine. I'm gonna turn my mic to the right a little bit too. I know sometimes that when I do this, um, my mic gets a little bit quieter. So if you guys could uh, let me know and make sure that uh, the sound is still good here. Um, I think he, oh no, he's got the whole cue ball, so he can, he can roll this in with some spin. He can hit it with straight top, or a little bit of inside, because the seven ball goes. So there's no reason to do anything extra here. I think you just make the six and bring the cue ball back over. Ah. Uh, Nicely done there, Jorge. So he opted to go ahead and uncomfortably just cut the six ball in and bring it two rails um, very confidently. Goes up table with a little bit of spin. So he's on the inside of the eight. I, I think he's going to pull this. He's either going to punch it into the rail or he's going to pull it straight back with some draw. He might put low left on there. Real um, quick, the link I just posted is to our Facebook group. It's a private group in there, but that has the payouts uh, in detail for everything. We posted it yesterday. Uh, if you go to that and you're not already in it, just click the uh, uh, join button, and I will be checking it to uh, make sure I get you guys in. All right, Jorge gets a game to get uh, to three. He's down 7-3. Needs to get a couple games together here to not let uh, the road runner start running away. 
what's going on, Pagnum? Yeah, I'm, short little trip to Vegas, man. The I hope we all kind of hope to run into you at some point. The we we missed you this year for uh, for BCA, but uh, it's good to see you in the chat, sweating this match here. We got some, uh, some phenomenal pull. Um, we got the uh, the finals here. Looks like Jorge's trying to grind his way out of a hole that he kind of let get away from him early on. And uh, we're going to see with his break here. He's kind of been letting off a little bit. Center ball. Well, he popped it, but he popped it right in the side. Yeah, he put all body into that break. Yeah. But it looks like that's a three ball combo into the seven. Um you know, do you go for the three foul here or at least play safe on the one and put it up there by the two and hide the cue ball? Or do you go ahead and just try and get to the backside of the two for the 210? I'm, I'm too much of a gopher. I like playing the backside of the two for the 210. That's correct. I'm Jorge is not in all of the side pots. He just got in the $100 side pot. Savannah's already taken first place in the... $300 side pot and won the winner take all. Which I believe we did the math is just under 10 grand. Yes. So Savannah's starting off the finals here, $10,000 richer. Uh, the $300 side pot first place was 4500 and I believe the winner take all was 5200 yes. Yeah, Jorge's been trying to find his break for the last two matches. Um, he's gone from breaking soft, center ball, um, with no body. Um, and then uh, it looks like she she was playing all cue ball on that one. She kind of took her eye off the prize and wanted to make sure that that cue ball got up there. Um, but uh, every time... Uh, Every time uh, Jorge's at the break, uh, he ends up, very last second, he ends up putting his body into it, and uh, it's sending the cue ball off to the side. Yeah, that's, it's it. throwing him offline. Hey, Kelly, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you watching the stream. I think he's still very well-tempoed, though. Um, he hasn't quite lost any of his... Uh, you know, uh, any of his nerve or anything, you know, he's still sitting upright, you know, in his chair. Uh, he's not defeated by any means. He's very he's much great, in this match. He's got great body English right now. He, I mean, he knows, not in English, great body language. language. Yeah. He's, he's in the match. He knows he's in the match. He just needs to put a couple things together and then things could turn around. Nice hit by Savannah. Yeah, I think if he just, if he just goes back to zero for his break, and starts, starts there. Just go with a soft, medium break, and maybe play the safe break, right? Where you roll the cue ball through the rack, you should be okay. I think I know the person who told you that, Zeb. <laughs> we were just talking about that. Well, I used to run tournaments at Main Street Billiards in Tucson, and we had a fun, some fun weekly tournaments. Just simple, five dollar entry, five and ten dollar side pots, and I took joy and pleasure out of selling side pots. I got nothing out of it other than the people investing in themselves because when they would do well and get money out of the side pot, you just see their eyes light up, and that was fun. There we go. Yeah, Kelly, we've got you down for the uh, tournament at the Q Club. Uh, for those that uh, aren't aware, we have uh, 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 the 60th anniversary tournament at the Q Club coming up April 27th and 28th. And uh, Katie Scott has got it to where there's uh, $1,500 total added for th in, uh, in three different brackets, 500 per. There's a 680 and under on the nine foot tables. There's a 580 and a 480 and under on the bar tables. Um, I forget the races offhand. I want to say the 480 and under is a 5 4 race. The 580 and under is a 5 5 race. And I think the 680 and under is a 6 6 race. Mm. All are $60 entries going to be a ton of fun um, if you haven't signed up send jason osborne your entry fees for that you can find the flyer on the las vegas pool players page or on our mob productions page uh, if you have any questions on it just message me i'm really excited for that 
uh, and Katie's having a, a Pro-Am celebrity charity tournament. I believe it's that Thursday before that. That they have me in as a pro, and I I did not <laughs> call myself a pro, but I will play and have fun because that's what it's really all about is uh, having fun and raising money for, for charities. I believe it's to benefit autism. You guys got quite the lineup coming. We have fun, but there's a lot of work. We have uh, this month is completely full. Unfortunately, May, we are pretty much off quite a bit because – there's a lot of the national championships here, but then in, starting in June, I think our next weekend off might be in October. Well, there's a juniors event going on, right? Isn't that the BEF? Uh, the I'm not sure the about BEF that. I'm not, I'm not part of that, but uh, we love supporting the juniors. We love yeah. seeing the juniors come out. Let's, I think he came up. Yeah, he's on the top side of the nine, huh? So he's going to... The last time I thought he was going to go two rails following it and back out for the 10, he kind of rip-drawed it with a bunch of spin. Um, it looks like he can kind of draw it back to the side rail and just leave himself the cut. Um, let's see what he's opting for. Okay. I actually like that shot. Just take, one thing we call it, taking your medicine. Yeah. You get on the wrong side, don't make it too complicated because you don't want to go around, catch a side pocket you're not planning for or something. Um, I like just knowing you're going to have a shot at your money ball. But the side pocket does seem to come up in pivotal moments like yes, this, it does. too. Nicely done. Nice and shot. And he's coming shy. Shy well, of the corner, so. Perfect. He's takes two in a row makes it seven four he also didn't hit it lightly right yeah i like that shooting with confidence and authority yeah ah! he's got both of his feet planted on the ground right now so we'll see if he can jump and take off here with the break absolutely i'd, I'd like to see jorge kind of dial it down to like 30 percent on his break real quick i want to give another Pitch to uh, that we are starting the 2024 Mob Tour this coming uh, weekend, this Saturday. It's the uh, April 13th. The Mob Tour has two brackets. Oh, he's moving his brake. He is moving his brake to the side rail. One in the side. Oh, so all right. He, here we go. Did he cut brake that yes, the he opposite? Did. He cut across it. Yes, he did. I haven't seen that approach to a 10 ball brake before. I have, I'm not sure it worked, but we'll see. That was interesting. He was trying to he was trying to keep the the one ball there. Uh, I, th I think he was trying to keep the one ball uh, there in the middle of the table and just bring the cue ball back up. Oh, she needs that ball to roll. That's not going to get a rail. Just shy. Yep. Real quick, I want to finish what I was saying. The, the first mob tour stop is going to be April 13th. It's split between Rum Runner and Putters. Um, our Mob Tour stops have two different brackets, two completely different tournaments, two different winners. We have a 499 and under and a 500 plus. The 499 and under is a handicap race to four with one game spot for every 50 points. Uh, no three foul. And with the 500 plus is a handicap race to five, one game spot for every 40 points. Max race of eight four, where the lower bracket is a max race of seven three. Is there a cap? Uh, no, 500 plus. So anybody can play. So we have eight open tournaments that we're running this year. Oh, wow. For players that uh, are looking to play some open tournaments, we have those. And then everybody accrues points every week, every week that they play. And you, the top half of the point earners are invited to the Added Money Tour finale, which will be held here at Griff's in November. Mm. I believe it's the week before the Formula One race. Yes, Zeb, to answer your question, uh, Griff's is a non-smoking uh, pool hall bar. Is this considered a pool? It is considered a pool. pool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is a non-smoking pool hall. That, one that's a big step up in the last two years. So Griff's was the first non-smoking pool hall in Vegas. Um, and then um, Q Club went non-smoking the, once they went down to the single one, the one room where they are now, in which Katie has done an amazing job at building that out, and Banging Balls is now no smoking. So Griff set the trend for no smoking pool rooms in, in Vegas. Uh, if the six gets there, all right, it didn't get there. Uh, th this is, uh, so Justin Turner is with me in commentary. Justin Turner is from Arizona. 
I think I think he's going to be looking at a really bad part of the five ball here. Yeah, I think she's going into the rail, back into the five. Yeah. Froze. That is froze. So now and he's at the bottom angle, bottom rail. So yeah. my mom always would tell me that you, you don't hit things good, you hit them well, and then it's not froze, it's frozen. <laughs> but I told her the pool grammar is you hit it good, and it's spelled G-U-U-D. Yes. G-U-U-D. I agree, Henry. I agree. And it looks like he's opting to go the one rail. He has a two rail exit here to get, but it looks I, like he I likes the one rail. I really don't like this one because, well, he makes a hit. He, good, great shot. That was laser. But I don't like that shot because of what happens on the hop. It's yep. so hard to control the ball when it's in the air because it's still spinning when it lands. Yeah, if I'm if I'm within a diamond of the rail like that, I'm never going that direction. Absolutely. I'm going two rails, four rails, zigzag, whatever it is, you know. Absolutely. Uh, just Patrick Knoll made a comment, and I want to agree with that. Mark Griffin set a foundation here. He absolutely did, and his impact on pool worldwide, let alone just here in Vegas, will be felt for years to come. So he's a missed soul. I think you uh, you thin this one and you get a rub off of the five and you put a little inside so that way you're behind the five and the nine. Oh, he went for... Uh, oh, he hit it firm. He's going up tail to put the cue ball on the end rail. Was he trying to make that ball? Did he call it? I don't it? think so. I don't think he called anything there. I was expecting him to play the safe there, and uh, but maybe he was trying to manufacture something, you know. Well, I there isn't a real reason to go for that with the two ball where it is. I mean, there's, oh, oh. That double kiss wasn't good because he can make this and go straight up table and knock the two out now. Had that one ball not been frozen on the rail, she would have got the cue ball out of the way. Absolutely. Yeah, the only the only uh, fault there was uh, not walking around the table to see what you're, what you're looking at. Yep. Oh, he got away with it. Nicely done. A lot of risk, but a very hefty ward. He's got a great shot on the two. Uh, looks like he can play it into the eight. I uh, think he can play it off the eight. Can he? Yeah. I, off the I eight think he's got side. both options there. It looks like, I think you're right. I think playing it off the eight might be better because it looks like the eight's just past the uh, point. It, it is past the corner. It goes in, but it's tight. So he's, oh, oh, he, oh wow. He was, he was holding his cue like he thought he needed to steer it, but it went in. You know, we've seen him in this position back cutting a ball into the side a couple of times now. And uh, I think he's shot it different every single time. I've seen him shoot this ball with low inside, straight draw, and low right, peeling it back two rails. Uh, with the four ball where it's at, I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes straight draw and kind of comes one rail back up, but he's got the six and the ten. Um, and it looks like he's following it three rails. Ooh. That could have gotten ugly quick. I saw George Teche in the chat. Good to hear from you, George. Uh, is there a tequila around you? A very good one, usually? If so, please take an extra sip for me. <laughs> A nice smooth stroke here, cinch it. Nicely done. Pulls the cue ball out. I think uh, I kind of like rolling this cue ball up to get a little flatter on the five so that way I can kind of pull. Yeah. You can pull the cue ball back two rails for the six. The seven ball is so close to the corner that. Uh, you don't need to have too much of an aggressive angle on the six ball here. And she must like that eight ball on the side, so it must be a better look than what it looked like to me. Yeah. She might have got a little too flat there because yeah. it looks... Just has to make this and kind of kind of drift over to about to the center of the table because then you can come back out for the, for the, for the eight ball, or do you like going three rails around for the eight? I like going three rails around for the eight because I don't really like draw, but... If I'm okay. Well, I didn't see her playing safe there. No. 
She might have caught that one a little bit thicker than what she wanted to. Yeah. I think it. I think she was trying to hold. The, I think she was trying to hold the cue ball. That's probably it. So focus so much on it. Sometimes you lose your aiming point. Yeah. Yes, that is correct, George. This is uh, the final. It is a uh, single. Uh, single race, modified uh, double elimination tournament. Uh, singles I need to race make to this thirteen. Bigger up here. The uh, below uh, Griff's, uh, I believe it says finals. I'm not sure what you guys see on your end, but uh, well, George's eyes might be getting a little old. That's true. A little bit of red wine never helped the eyesight. Oh, is he going to get... Okay, so bump the nine so she's able to see half of the ball here. I think you play it into the eight. I think you go for the gusto and... Uh, oh, play the eight ball here. I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah, play for the eight. You give it some good pace. Well, he's calling the, she's calling the bank. Oh, so she's going for the two-way. So, yeah. She's going to bank the six and pull the cue ball behind the nine? I think she's just going to stop the cue ball and play its pocket speed. And where If it goes long, it's behind the ten ball, and then she's got a shot on the seven. Just what you said. <laughs> let me be quiet and let Justin talk. <laughs> All right. So we got ourselves. Uh, would be cool to have a camera on the final table directly over the table as an option. <laughs> I hooked myself earlier, but I kicked it in. <laughs> yeah. I don't miss much from behind the mic. You know, I I kind of like. I kind of like this two rail behind the six because the seven ball allows for a large pocket up there. Um, it, there's a chance that the cue ball can scratch in that corner up there, but I, th I think, uh, I think there's a, a large opportunity for him to make that six in the corner by the seven. Oh wow! Yep. He actually uh, just went too short. Well, he put a bunch of spin on it, actually. Oh, did he spin that ball? That, that Yeah. Sh well, it lengthens it off the first rail, so on the two rail, it comes up short on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he ended up being about a half a diamond short on and that And what did he ball. do with the seven ball? It, uh, because it came in so short, it went into the bottom rail, back into the side rail, and back cut the seven ball up table towards the eight. So she, did she call the eight? Is she playing the carom on the eight ball here? I didn't quite get to see any kind of body language, so I can't uh, comment. Yes, nice okay, shot. Yeah. Yep, so she went for the carom. Uh, I think she's got enough room to punch it into the, into the rail and come back out, so that way she's not laying on the rail here. Oh, so she's going for the draw. So she's going to pull it below the side. She must feel pretty confident there. Oh, that was a nice stroke. Very nice stroke. I was expecting her to kind of follow it into the top side of the pocket. That way. Oh, the I see what you're saying. Out, you know? Yep. Le leave it to where you're shooting down at the end rail. Yeah. And you could kind of come two rails out of the corner back towards the 10. But she left herself straight in. So she left herself perfect. Had enough room there to, to punch that 9 ball in. And it looks like she's going to punch the 10 ball in. Yep. All right, it's eight to four in a race to 13. Uh, yes, I know Lippman lights do have the ability to have overhead cameras and uh, Griff's is a bar full of Lippman lights. They're above all the diamond tables. Griff's, if you haven't been to Griff's Billiards in Las Vegas, you need to make it uh, one of your uh, bucket list stops when you come to Vegas. It's one of the nicest rooms in the country. Absolutely. The I think the option of having the overhead camera uh, with a uh, with a tournament like this. Oh, that was a nice break. Oh, it, I think the two ball was tracking towards the corner, and the eight ball kind of came a little bit short there. But you guys do have a you guys use a a second camera sometimes too as well right? well we so i'm going to take a page out of colin's newey book uh who does the post up stream up in hard times and other rooms oh, okay where when people will maybe critique his 
commentary. He says, I'm not a commentator, I'm a streamer, and he has other commentators come in. Well, I'm not really even a streamer. We're tournament directors that also stream. So we started from the ground up with this stream, and we're trying to build up and improve it. So we've, we've added another camera in certain angles. This p position where we're at, it's really tough to do that. Um, so we didn't have a second camera angle here. But we're working on that. We're also working on adding a few different things. So it's, it's like I said, it's piece by piece. And that's really when anybody asks where the donations go from the, the, the give to the stream. It's just to kind of help improve the product going forward. So we really appreciate all the donations that have come in. Yeah, because I've, I've seen you guys have multiple tables, yeah. you know, uh, you can use, I've seen you have, you're able to pan over to the table next to or have a dual. Yeah, well, sometimes uh, we'll have another camera set up on a different table or we'll have two camera angles set up on one table so you can see different shots and different angles. Yeah. Just depending on what the setup provides to us. Hmm. Because when you have something that's mobile that we carry in and carry out, you don't have all the options you do if you're built in from the ceiling. Yeah. You know, and I've, I, I kind of want to comment on uh, something that you said. Uh, I, I know you were mentioning, um, you know, post up and everything that he does up there in yeah. uh, Sacramento. And the, the statement that he makes, you know, I'm a streamer, not a commentator, right? You know, the um, but commentating when you're sitting there on the mic streaming, right? It comes oh, yeah. with a job, oh, right? Absolutely. But you know, a lot of people don't understand that that's not a that's not a skill that is easily learned to no. be able to talk. You know, this is only my couple of time, and I know I've already made quite a few mistakes. But uh, uh, it is not easy to commentate uh, on a match, um, regardless of how much knowledge you have or don't have. Um, to be able to pay attention to the chat, to the player shooting, you know, um, and I kind of want to take a moment that, to recognize everybody who actually sits and talks while they're streaming you know you got to give them props uh because it is not an easy thing to do especially um, when it's uh, only one person on the mic so i appreciate having you in here yeah it, it is you know it's weird talking to yourself it is. um you know uh i'm actually really glad that you are in here you know because <laughs> talking to myself and to the you know to the viewers you know is you know there's some feedback right but when there's when the chat is empty you know yeah. you you gotta you gotta stay alive you know absolutely and i appreciate the chat that we've had God. we've had some great viewership thank you everybody that was a great hit he had to spin that ball kind of a swerve into that yeah he had to bend it down and he got the cue ball to kind of die there on the top rail there um yeah it wasn't it wasn't just a a mass a where you're letting the cue ball go that was controlled yeah the um well i go on to see uh, but to conclude my uh, to conclude my statement, you know, I I think you guys are doing a fantastic and amazing job with everything that you are doing, you know, and that uh, the comments for the commentators on the stream are for the birds, in my opinion, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, no, until absolutely. you sit in the booth and you know you you commentate, you know. Uh, on a match, you know, because some people like to hear people talk, and then some people like to hear knowledge. Right. You know. Right. They're, one commentator is not meant for all viewers and listeners. That's very true. Um, That's very you know, true. And I think that, uh, you know, oh. just like everything in the pool community, we have to kind of whine about something in order to be a pool player. <laughs> <laughs> well, Savannah's got uh, this table pretty much under wraps right now. She might be commentating her own match in her head right here. Yeah, but left. she's she's in just a nice rhythm. Oh wow! Yeah, and she hit it with some pace, so there was no fear there coming across. Yeah, when she gets down on this ball, look at how serious her face is. I, I every viewer out there, I, I kind of want you guys to turn the brightness up on your phone, so that way you can kind of see this face. She is so serious right now that. There is there is nothing going on in that mind other than I'm winning this thing right now, you know. And you got, I think Jorge. You just see this look where he's kind of searching through a book, going page by page, trying to figure out what he's got to do in order to get out in front of this. And uh, 
Savannah's not even freewheeling. She's keeping it tight. She's playing smart. She's not letting up. Mm -hmm. How do you go about defeating or even getting back into the ring with that? What, what's the first step that you would do, Jack? The, fir the first step is just change, change to your, have a determined focus on the next shot because he's had some both safeties and shots leak out on him that, that got away. And you can't have that from this point out. He has to, every shot he has to make the most out of. Yeah, I agree. We started to see him make an adjustment on his break. You know. I, okay, so, you know, he, the last time he couldn't see the one ball, he tried jumping at it. Um, he can't see the one ball now, so we might see him two rail kick behind it and kind of. He might get a good, nice little stick there behind the three. Well, he might get a result behind the five. Oh, just rolled past the five. All right, she calls the side pocket, so it looks like she's got a line there. Um, it looks like there's a good stopping ball for the two on the other side here. Oops, I just started her back at zero. Yeah, I'm not sure. I apologize, guys. I didn't. I didn't get to catch what happened there with the one ball. I got it. Okay, so he goes for the carom. He leaves himself a very reasonable shot on the other side with the one ball. It looks like he's on the. Uh, he looks like he's on the bottom side of the one. Um, so we could see him roll up to shoot the two in the side or in the other side and actually put a nice bigger stroke on there. Okay, so he was flatter. I might need a Red Bull. There's probably a good, good chance of that. I think he uh I think he might try and punch out for the three. Give himself some extra confidence there. Looks like Okay, so he held it with a little bit of inside. Rub off the five helped a little bit. I believe the four goes by the seven, doesn't it? Or does he have to play the combo? No, it no. goes it goes by, but he's got about, I think he's got just over half a pocket there. Um, even if he does rub the seven going in, uh, the seven will probably help him unless he hits it really thick. Yeah, I no issues there. So he's he's kind of flat on this, so he's got to give this a good he's got to give this a good stroke. He's he's either got to go forward two rails and come back up, or he's got to draw it back. Um, I don't think that he can go one rail back to the center. Um, I think he's too With straight. With some high outside, you can't get there. I I think he ends up going. I think I think he ends up killing the ball too much. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah you're right. He dr draws it back. Yeah. <coughs> He's got a little close to the rail again, so I don't. I think we'll see him punch it. At least it's a hair off the rail, so he can dig into it a bit if he needs to. Yeah. Well, he's shooting with top. Yep. Oh. He's good. He is. Is he good? He's good. Oh wow. Just. I wouldn't even. Uh, I wouldn't even overhit this. I would actually just make it with a little bit inside and shoot, shoot the, the nine up table. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah, there's the, there's no need to do anything extra here. Yep, that's what he opts for. It looks like he uh, he ended up getting a little bit closer to center ball on that one. He didn't quite have the inside. Uh, that he wanted. Mm. 
Nice shot there by Jorge. Glides it right into the corner pocket. And, uh, oh, that's interesting. Savannah gave him the ball. Oh, I, that's, that's the first one I've seen either of these players concede in yeah. the tournament. Huh. You think she's trying to stop the momentum, keep them from shooting? Well, there's, there's, I don't, well, I don't think it's a move on the part, but there is something to be said about them not seeing the money ball fall. I don't think that's why she did it. I think she did it out of respect, but I haven't seen her do that before. Yeah. Normally, you know, I'm, in my personal opinion, I'm 100% against it uh, because anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he could follow it in, he could bobble it, you know. Uh, okay, he went for the cut break again here. Eight ball on the side. One ball. Well, one ball goes in the corner. It goes in the side. Okay. He has a play. Yeah, he's got a, he's got an option here. He's he's well on the two. Two goes in the side. All he's got to do is keep it, keep the cue ball back there. So a nice little stop shot. And most importantly, is make this ball. Nice shot. Someone once told me you can't get out if you miss the first ball. Mm -hmm. I think he's got a, a pretty a pretty big angle here. I, I kind of like him shooting this in the corner and coming back across to shoot the three in the same corner and playing the cue ball above the 10. I don't like rolling up towards this 5-9 at all. He might be able to spin around it, but I think there, it's just too risky. And it looks like he's going he's going for the cut in the side. So he's either going to try and hold it. Well, he held uh, it fairly he, well. There's a big angle on this ball, though. So And if he cuts this, is he going to run into the 10 ball? So it looks no. like he... So you think he can cut it in and miss the 10 ball? I think so, yeah. I Actually, I think he might pull the cue ball into the 10 and use the 10 as a stopper, actually. I wouldn't be... Uh, yep. Interesting. The real question is, is do you do you kind of draw and hold it to the right rail, or do you send the cue ball back across two rails to shoot the five in the other corner? Because I don't think I don't think he likes shooting it into this bottom right with where and running into the nine. I wouldn't be surprised if she banks this and draws the cue ball below the 5-9 and plays the two-way. Uh, smart shot. I like it. She could cut it and go three rails below the five. I didn't see her call. I, did, I didn't you? see her call anything either. She must have. She, <laughs> she must have. Although she 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 followed through the bank instead of uh, drawing out of the bank, which uh, Is this you? I find it kind of interesting. Water? That's probably yours. Yeah, I think it was for my land. So now she's got a nice little punch punch out one rail back over for the six seven balls in front of the hole. Okay, so she opted to shoot this in the side. That's a good play. I kind of agree with you, Zeb. The, you know, that that would have been the option there, but uh, she was feeling that bank. Um, and normally she le she's been playing a lot of two ways, so I, I kind of saw the cue ball going back there. I just didn't. Uh, oh, she came up a little shy. Well, she's she's going to go, go get her jumper. No, she's going to go rail first. Oh, you think, you think so? She's kicking it in? Mm-hmm. I think she's going to kick it in rail first. Off the left rail? Yep. And the cue ball is going to naturally carry two rails back up here. Yep. Does it get past the side? It does. 
All right, so she made it a little tough for uh, Jorge, but Jorge's kind of excelled at these shots here when it comes down to uh, the case ball. So um, normally he doesn't really make a mistake at the end of the rack. It's usually in the beginning or in the middle of the rack, and at least from what we've seen in this match so far. Is that cuttable on the side, or is he... It looks like it is, but the scratch comes in playing that corner. It, well, there's two scratches there, right? If he hits it thick, it scratches in the bottom left. Oh. Um, yeah. He's you, he's pretty favored to make that ball. But yeah, he, I like him making that. He kind of soft, surprisingly. Normally he's Trying to control it, yeah. He's, he's going across the table a couple, couple times shooting shots like that. Yeah. Nicely done, simply. Just rolling up. And it looks like, okay, so she's going to follow it. One rail out. Oh. I think she's still good. I think she can still see the 10. I don't think she got a uh, corner hook there by the side. Yeah, she's queuing up like she can make it, so. We got ourselves a uh, five-game uh, deficit here, um, ten to five, uh, in a single race finals. Yes. Race to thirteen. It's a three-eight race. Both these players have been playing very, very hard the last couple of years, trying to improve their game, and uh, this is a testament to that, and they both deserve this win. And I think that's the, I think that's the first break that we've seen that she's able to see the one and made a ball. I think you're right. Unfortunately, uh, it looks like the the one-two combo. She might be able to throw the two in. Um, I can't quite see how it's laying, but uh, yeah, it looks like she's uh, okay. So she's cutting the one to back cut the two into the corner. Yep, nicely done. And she played it with speed, so she's got a nice, reasonable shot on the one to come out. I think for the three in the side um, or she might go three rails and shoot the three ball in the same corner here it looks like she's drawn out one rail okay so she's came she came up a little bit short than where she wanted to she wanted to play the the three ball back in the same corner um, she's got a few options here she can she can play safe, whether it's above or below the the six nine. Um, she can go for the pot. She opts for the safe. I don't think that Jorge's got a window between the nine six. Um, kind of where I'm sitting, it looks like there's more than enough room for the cue ball to go through there, but it doesn't look like there's much future. Uh, so. He might try and soft kick um, and just get the good hit and try and leave the cue ball on the top side of the three so that way. Nope. No rail. Nope. I kind of like soft rolling into that. I don't, so I don't blame you on that one. Just, just driving, the, driving the ball to the rail? Yeah, just making sure that you get a good hit and you leave the cue ball, you know, kind of on top of the three, you know, because uh, you're – you leave him a combo, you know, or, uh, you know, a carom. It gets really tough to play safe at that point, you know. Right. Um, and it looks like, I think she left herself well enough on the four ball here to hold it for the six. Yes. Um, 
She's gonna shoot nice and soft. Look at that. Nice yep. stroke. Nice touch. Pull this ball back a little bit. Shoots a seven in the bottom right. Yes, John. Very delicate. Nice and smooth. She wants to be on the back side of the seven. She can kind of stop or I would replace the object ball in this shot and shoots an eight and eight up table. Yep. I like that. Uh, I I don't think she's got an angle, but it kind of. Oh. Oh. All right. So she she definitely had an angle yeah, there. Yeah, she did. It was a little tough. I got this crease right here in the plexiglass, so. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm trying to uh, minimize the echo. That might it. It also might be. It, it might be my mic. Or no, I, I guess the, the logo's on this side, huh? All right, she's using the bridge here. She is very adept at the bridge. Yeah, I'd have to take the nine ball um, from her on the bridge. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, either that or you know, give me give me a couple five extra tries to your one, you know. I'll, I would never play her heads up with the bridge. <laughs> no. <laughs> her height already has an advantage, you know. Yeah, she's playing very, very tight right now. Um, See, she had a very smooth break last time. She potted the ball. All right, so she made the second ball on the side. And it looks like the two ball rolled just out of the way enough to where she can see the one in the side. So it looks like she's got a great opportunity here to make something happen. She needs two. Jorge needs eight. Um, and she is dead straight in on the one ball on the side. The two to the three looks reasonable. Um, three to the four, five to the seven combo maybe. Um, with the three being gone, she might be able to actually just draw it back for the five in the other corner um, instead of playing the combo. Um, she has an opportunity to straighten up her cue ball right here. Yep. She's got a chance to just kind of hug hug the rail and pull it back with a little bit of spin. Oh, I guess she is a little elevated over the five. Nope, she hits it well. So she's got the five in the corner. There's a bump here on the seven. Do you bump the seven to play the six on the side? I think so, yeah. It looks like, it looks like the cue ball might be traveling off the back side of the seven, so... I might actually hit this with some pace so that way the cue ball goes into the rail and back back out. Okay, so she was able to hit it a lot fuller than I thought. Yeah, so, and she's on the right side of the six, so she, if she wants, she can kind of stiff this into the side and pull the cue ball back for that seven ball. I, I don't like drawing back. Um, there we go. Beautiful yeah. stroke. And I, I think you just kind of play this stiff with center top and go two rails. Yeah, right there for the eight in the side. She came up a little bit short, but I think she's got enough of the eight to be able to just smooth it and hold the cue ball right there with a little bit of low right. Perfect. Savannah with a break and run to get to the hill. And I think more than half of those shots she once stroked in. Oh, she's in rhythm. She's in dead punch. Yep. Speaking of Joshua Filler, she did have an amazing match against Pia Filler, Joshua's wife up in Iowa. Pia is around a 700, I think 695 or 700 level player. Uh, played a tournament in Iowa recently and where uh, she beat Pia 8-5 and had four break and runs in that match. Mm-hmm. 
So she and she's not quite 700 yet. There's not a 700 female player yet, other than. Uh, well, you uh, mean in the, in the state? In the U.S., yeah. So P is as German. I don't think she's over so. She's not. She's like 695. Yeah, but yeah. There are 700 females. Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah, and okay. Philippines and. Uh, well, also Ma Ma Chinese. Margaret, uh, uh, Steyer, Tyler's wife is like a 740. Yep. Uh, Allison Fisher, uh, Kelly Fisher. Cheska, who won a, the World Able, Able oh, yeah. Championship, uh, uh, the Filipino. Of course, Simon Chen, who was down here for yeah, the. Yes, Simon Chen, yeah. For the. Um, not the U.S. Open, but for the Swanee, she played in that. Well, she also played in uh, the Predator, the World, yes. right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's right, because she. she the cue ball, the table rolled off on her, and the cue ball got sucked into the side, and mm -hmm. she had a beautiful two-rail kick on the uh, on the ten ball there. I, I yeah, I think he he's a four ball there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, she cut the brake line. There's no stop in this train. So Jim Monday, the, it's easy to explain how her rating is a 605. She is playing well above that rating. It's just that she has improved so much uh, over the last year, year and a half, two years, and has a lot of games in the system, and she's outstripping the Fargo rate at the moment. So she is playing ahead of that. She's going to stun it down for the four in the other corner. Oh, no, she's going for the 410. Or do, oh, she's calling the 10 ball? Yep, calling the 10 in the corner. This would be a uh, great way to end the match here. I believe we looked it up. She has uh, nicely done. Congratulations. What a wonderful showing by Savannah Easton, a.k.a. the Roadrunner. Jorge with a phenomenal follow-up here for a second-place showing. The only person to beat Jorge is Savannah Easton. Jorge did have a wonderful showing. The, uh, you know, some people were in the comments mentioning that he was kind of gassed and uh, running out of energy and stuff like that, you know. But I, I, he didn't have much opportunity to get anything going. Savannah no. kind of locked she, him up. She, she, she suffocated him in this. Yeah. She really did. She played an amazing match. She played smart. She yep. played tight. Uh, she made some amazing shots. But she also didn't go for some shots that we would have called amazing. Um, it it would have, you know, she played intelligently. Yeah. And that's really the fun part to see. And her game is, is improving by leaps and bounds every time I watch her play. So it's so fun. Well, but, a, but a huge shout out to Jorge. He had a magnificent tournament. Yeah. He just got run over by the roadrunner in this one, and there's not much he could have done. Same thing with Mike D. Mike yep. D did a phenomenal job in this really? event on the backside winning Five, six, no, uh, six matches on the loser side. Yeah, six, six matches. Three matches on the loser side to get to get to third place. So you know, I don't know that Savannah's nickname should be the Roadrunner the because <laughs> uh, I was thinking more like you know because it's almost like a Ben and Jerry situation where she's just kind of fooling her opponents into thinking <laughs> they have a chance, you know, and they're sitting there thinking they've got the nuts, you That's know, very, and very well put. Well, Justin, that or a boa constrictor. Justin, thank you so much. You spent a lot of time with us in the booth. Really appreciate that. Uh, entertaining the viewers really want to give a big shout out to all of you the viewers that are out there thank you so much for your being part of the chat making this such a great event this will be an annual tradition uh that we will have here at griffs so thank you very much we're gonna have to stop the stream now but i appreciate you all tuning in uh have a great week